know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah, but it'll get you better. You, 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 you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good, but this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great, and I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. We got a special show tonight. We're still in the quarantine, doing it on remote. Harry's in the building. Dre's in the building. Dre, you ready to rock and roll? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, all that. All right. Uh, you, you know the barbers are open. You realize that yeah. right now? Instinct. Even uh, I'm going to be asking about cutting my hair. Now it's rebellion. Uh, All right, is that you're what really, it is? You just really, you're rebelling against attractiveness, <laughs> not your mother. <laughs> I'm, fine with that. I'm a neck down type nigga. I got abs. From up here, it's rough. But down, you're good. Oh, boy. Andre's a butterface. Uh -huh. <laughs> are, are you ready to rock and roll? You know I'm ready to rock and roll, even though I'm we, having a tough time keeping these gators down. It is difficult. Uh... We got special guests. You do the honors, Harry. Come That's on. That's right. This, I'm, this I'm a little upset because somebody's got a hot studio, too. So, oh, you know, boy. Yeah, I know what a problem this is going to be now. Every time we get somebody with a better studio, I just get phone calls. Or I'm on Amazon right now. I'm on Amazon. I think we can get this lighting rig. $800 lighting rig. It's a steal. Like, it's I don't a know steal. if we need it. Remember when you wanted to put uh, an ice maker and uh, what else did Actually you Actually have put? the ice maker. Yeah, the ice I checked maker. it out this weekend. Oh my it God. will be put in the studio this week. Because oh why do you have a bar and not have ice? You know, you would get a white intern. You should get like a, a white intern. We well, we should get that. any so intern. We get rid of you. Yeah. <laughs> you're, technically, you're still an intern. You haven't done any work in four years. That's how you're funny. <laughs> that ain't my problem. And also, you didn't go to college. So there's a lot of things wrong with your internship. There's a ton of things wrong. And just for the record, Dre, you stink as an intern. You're yeah. the worst. You are the worst. Like but you your Mara was better than you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Let's not get nuts here. Look, um, boots. Oh, my God. <laughs> You do wear spandex and Ugg boots every once in a while. <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a cut off t-shirt with under boob. Go ahead. <laughs> well, anyway, this gentleman, the man with the amazing studio, uh, one of the one of the podcasting OGs from the beginning when it was even internet radio, let's be honest, uh, the guys from Queens Network, What The Tech, Matt Men, uh, my good buddy, and a, and a podcasting legend, Andrew Zarian, everybody. Andrew Zarian is with us. Holy man, what an intro. Up. What's Dante, up, Dante, listen, this is all this is all a fucking facade. It's just paper mache and green screens. That, that, yeah, is that, that what it's all green studio. screen? Yeah, you, know how I can tell, you know how I can tell it's not? Because you got that? action figures. You only have action figures when you <laughs> got a it. real studio. That's how you do See? it. That's yeah. how you got to have a studio. If you got it, bobbleheads, look at you got troll kids there. I see an incredible Hulk, some wrestling figures. Can't fake it. You can't fake that on green screen, my friend. You can't. It's, a, it's just a desk. Nothing else. It, it, this, <laughs> this isn't even a room. It's a hologram at this point. But he does uh, have dude, the Matt I, Lauer lock under the door, which is very weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. Very weird. <laughs> I'm glad to be here, Dante. This is uh first of all, Dante's a podcasting legend at this point. I didn't know that. All my buddies have done his <laughs> podcast at this point. So, you know, you, you, inside of comedy and, and outside of comedy. I mean, I've Harry's been telling me to come on the show every time, but unfortunately, he tells me like 20 minutes before, and he tells me to get to Brooklyn. 
That's, that's true. true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I mean, but now you don't have to. You just got to hit a link and pop in your studio. Whole new world. How long have you been? How long you've been doing uh, podcasting? Uh, so I got I got fired from my job in 09. So, yeah, 2009. What was your job? Did you I was in IT. OK. Yeah. And I got then you fired. Just, what was your what is the is it your, has your podcast changed or what was it initially? And yeah, so I, I you know, growing up in New York, you listen to radio, you know, Howard Stern, Opie and Anthony sports talk. So I was big into radio. And uh, I started doing, you know, more like a radio format show for a while. Mm -hmm. right. I had the Andrew Zarian show. We did that for like six, seven years. Uh, and then I kind of, I couldn't make a dime off that. Right. I couldn't make any money from doing like a variety show. So I kind of started doing niche stuff. So I started doing technology, then pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I kind of varied. We have like 10 different shows now on the network. I only do two now, but. We cover all different types of shows and content and stuff like that. And right, right. You know, knock on wood, almost 11 years now, we're still, wow. you know, still doing this. Wow, that's dope. That's dope. It's The game has changed so much. I mean, clearly it's changed when Joe Rogan gets $100 million for his podcast. That's crazy. It's wild. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, you look at him, and he started off just doing a Ustream thing. That I mean, that that's pretty much wow. how we started off. And yeah. he's Damn. blown, I mean, a $110 million deal with Spotify. Un unreal. Wow. The crazy. Ustream thing is, that's unbelievable that, that he started back then. Like yeah. all the stuff, all the stuff like real audio, like all those little things that used to happen before all this podcasting <laughs> stuff existed. You know, I kind of pride myself into kind of knowing when like stuff's happening, like I'm above the curve <laughs> with this stuff. So I remember, yeah. uh, I think it was, it could have been the CEO of Ustream at the time, this, uh, Brad. He sold it to IBM, but he called me. He's like, hey, we want to do a partnership. I saw your video. Your studio looks good. Uh, do you know who Joe Rogan is? Check out his show and let me know what you think. And I listened. Wow. The first time I listened to Joe's thing, I go, it stinks. He'll never make it. Right. <laughs> That's what I told him. <laughs> now, oh, what was boy. that? Because it was such a long format? Yeah, it just, it looked like shit. It, it sounded terrible. The video was bad. I was like, I don't know how anybody's going to listen to this. And then, you know, and also, he got his act together. In all fairness, Joe was probably high at the time because he still does three-hour podcasts. Oh, yeah. yeah. At least there's some sort of semblance. But at the beginning, I'm sure it, it you know, must have just been guys getting high in front of microphones. Pretty much it. I yeah. mean, now it's pretty much that. But he, he, you know what's amazing? Like, Dante, you have a variety of guests on your show. Right, right. You know, and you, talk, you cover everything. Like, this guy talks about the Anunnaki landing on this planet and how the pyramids are, are you know, yeah. alien spacecrafts. And then they'll have, you know, Bernie Sanders yeah. the next day. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, you know, because he's because here's what I think happened. Like um, the game has changed in terms of your you have to be the product. So Joe had so much stuff going on you know, with M uh, MMA and he was doing Fear Factor and stuff like, so he was a visible, he was a visible guy. So one of the things, I mean, and, and I mean, you have a whole network. So like, and I, I would say this to anybody that wants to do a podcast, like everybody wants to do kind of variety kind of thing. And the variety kind of thing doesn't work unless you're famous enough that people want to hear what your take is on everything. But, if you wanted to like, so, I mean, just, I mean, let's just be honest. I'm pretty brilliant. Uh, hmm. But hmm. the thing is, I, we had to, what we like, what I always say this to any podcast. I say the three things that are evergreen in, in podcasting is how to make money, uh, how to lose weight, fitness, and, and uh, relationships. Everybody has a problem with their relationship everybody's trying to lose a few pounds and everybody's trying to make more money. So if you, those three categories are evergreen. And so our, our thing was always the relationship thing. And, and the thing is about it, no matter what happens, everybody has the ability to, uh, there's some kind of relationship. You have some kind of relationship and, and some kind of social interaction and, you know, we could speak on that. And so that was the pick. So then I, then you become the relationship guy, which is interesting because I'm way more into politics than I am to into the whole relationship stuff, politics and history and stuff like that. But just kind of picking a lane and being kind of this niche guy, kind of, I, I think you, you become the guy because the days of, okay, I have a book 
and he doesn't let me promote my book. Your book kind of defines you. And now it doesn't even, your book doesn't even matter. Your podcast is the thing that defines you. Yeah, but here's the thing, right? Like, um, I, I listened to the show you guys did last week, which, by the way, great conversation okay. uh, about what a piece of crap Jimmy Carter is. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> great conversation about that. Oh, but boy. You guys were touching on, you know, like yeah. uh, that subject on how nobody could be good. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that every the opinion of who you are, mm -hmm. it, for you, Dante, right? It's based on your show, the topic that someone's listening about, so yeah. relationships, and what you put out on the internet. The second right. you bend away from that, right? Like the second right. your take has is beyond what I have figured out in my Received. head that Dante's like. Shut it's up over. and dribble. Yeah, it's yes. over after that. Like, forget it. And, and then now I'm, you know, I'm tweeting you and telling you why, why is that your opinion? I don't like it. I posted something about uh, my, my, I'm doing my yard. Like, this is you want to know how how crazy things have gotten. Uh -huh. This guy went at me that my plants are gonna get too hot in my yard now because I put pavers down and that I'm killing my plants. And he went nuts on me in a DM. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. It, it's, it, it's they, because you're in their ear. Do you know what I mean? It's such a different kind of thing. It's like you're in their ear. It's not, I mean, we're not even hearing it out, out of speakers anymore. We're, you're in inches from people's eardrum and you're whispering in their ear every single day when they're on the train when they're off the train when they're on their on the treadmill so it becomes a jogging. very intimate sort of yeah. relationship in a weird way because you're there constantly too it's i remember hearing that uh tv was like that where people talk people are more intimate with people on tv because they see them every week instead of people in movies and stuff so like george yeah. jefferson would walk down the street or not uh sherman Helmhill. um helmsley. Would walk, helmsley i'm sorry would walk down the street and people would all, everybody knew who he was because they'd see him week after week. So they feel like they're connected. And that, unfortunately, with the internet now, though, people kind of turn too because they feel, they feel connected, but then they also have the freedom to amplify any criticisms they have no matter what. You're more accessible. Yeah. And they have a voice and there's a two way. I mean, back in the day, you figure, you know, you would see that all the time when you watch old black and white movies, how they would have Clark Gable and he would have like sacks of letters of fan mail that he would get. It's not now. Everybody has an instant connection with you to whatever you do, you know, and they feel like they're they feel like they've invested and, and they. But I, I mean, you get. <laughs> I just got a thing from, I got a guy, I, I, I'm pretty I mean, cool with Godfrey, and I do his podcast a lot with him, and a guy sent him an email saying, yeah, you know, stuff that Dante talks about is, uh, it's spotty, it's spotty, if you really listen to it, it's spotty, and then spotty. it trails off, and it's stuff that, stuff that other people have said, yeah, everything that we own we, 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 every bit of information, somebody else thought of it. I didn't invent the theory of relativity. I could talk about it though. So it's like it, the guy's point was that uh, I, he's heard my things before, you know, like Carl Jung, like Freud, like, you know, it's just, it's ridiculous. And then he goes on to tell me, this is interesting. He goes to say, he's telling Godfrey that I, I, when I first came around the scene on the comedy scene, that I was um I was snapping on people and bullying them and I was trying to bully Wait, him. What? And he said I was he was, I'll, I'll read the I'll read it to you. Hold on, this is yeah. Me. Find this yeah. for me. Just I'm, got I'm, it today. I'm uh, fascinated by this. You know, the only people you're, you're bullying. canceled. It's over. I'm canceled. This guy's canceled. We're going yeah. Ellen Wise. We're going Ellen. <laughs> I've okay. heard those rumors about Ellen for years, by the way. It's interesting yeah, now it now just comes. That's the thing. That's the thing with the internet. Nothing dies. So here's this Dante Nero's knowledge is spotty. Take oh a closer listen. He goes, next time, G, talking to Godfrey, you hear the little things you heard from other people that trails off uh, most of his answers. Like I said before, I'm no hater of him. I think I told you earlier when he came to the city, when he saw me at the clubs, he was trying to bait me into a fight, which now, Harry, right. you ever see me bait somebody into no. a fight? What? No, I, what I have seen is people say some stupid shit and then you correct them. It's not really baiting them into a fight. You don't give a shit about and fighting if I anybody. Fight, and if yeah. I want to fight, I'm fight not going to bait you. Right. 
I'm gonna be like, let's fight. I don't know. That's a bait. Is that a, is no? I I, I already know what the tone of this letter is. You made this guy sound like a, he was saying some stupid shit either oh, yeah. about relationships or about comedy. He goes, used to. You know this guy. His name is um. He used to be at the New York Comedy Club. He had like piranha teeth, bald head. His name was Maurice. Oh, I don't remember the the guy specifically. All right, yeah, yeah, I will, I'll show you a picture. I'll send uh, you a picture. But you this dude, he was dumb. He was really dumb. Right. And he used to say, I remember, I, re I didn't remember him at first. And then I remember telling him, I said, you know that you're, you, you, you shoot ignorance and stupidity from your head in all directions when you talk, right? right. I said, just everything that comes from your face is stupid. And, uh, and then I remember are uh, getting away with used to make me angry to hear him talk because it was uh, you know how like we do this thing andrew we do this thing now where you'll be interviewing somebody and they'll say something and it'll be a little off and then it'll say something else and it'll be a little uh, and then in your mind it clicks you clicks the way you go oh you're an idiot like yeah, you're, yeah. <laughs> like i thought you were normal i was talking to you like you but you're a fucking idiot right and, um yeah and then that you're stuck with that so he like, used oh, to put you, get you in this like high anxiety spinning on the thing. And you, it just put you in this stupid conundrum where you'd be asking questions and he wouldn't even be addressing the thing. And so it used to get me so mad that I, that I realized I was so angry with him whenever I would run into him. So I apologized just to kind of clear the air. So he goes, what he says, where's the thing at? He says, uh, he apologized to me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He goes, uh, uh, the kicker was the reason why he stopped fucking with me was in, when he saw me, I was friends with somebody that he wanted to work with. That's when he stopped and apologized to me. But listen, next time TV heard f from talk shows, uh, he goes, he goes, but I'm not a hater. I'm like, all right, cool. Hey, when's, when's the last time you thought of this guy before this email? <sighs> 20, 20 years. 20 18, years ago. Wow. 18 He's still years. thinking about you. 18 years ago. 18 years wow. ago. I might have I re re referenced him if I thought somebody was really dumb. I might have used bar him for as the, the bar for <laughs> stupid, but nothing. That, so it's, cr it's crazy. I mean, you, gotta, you have to deal with that kind of stuff, too, where they feel, Andrew, where they, you know, they feel they know you. Yeah, I get, I get a lot. I got, I got a crazy, uh, probably one of the few... I, I have a couple. One, I had to get the cops involved. This is years ago. I had a guy that was obsessed with my wife. And, uh, I mean, but started... come on. We all are. I, I mean, know. That's yeah. fine. I get it. Listen, <laughs> Beautiful lady. I, I'm very nice lucky. Lady. I'm very lucky. But I, I, had the, I had that guy. But I had one guy. Um, he, he ran. I don't even know who he was. He's a, he's a fan of one of the, the wrestling show. Mm. I, I'm, I, I, I become one of these paranoid people where I started deleting people from my Facebook Mm -hmm. that I don't know. So yeah. unless I know you or I like, I know a friend like through that, yeah. that's, that's how I do it because yeah. I got my kids on there. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm an old man now and I got, I got a family. So it's all my family shit on there. Right. So I started deleting people and somehow this guy lasted on there and I posted a picture. My wife actually tagged me in a photo of my kid's birthday. Uh -huh. And this guy went off saying, I don't want to see your fucking kids. Why are you shoving your kids down my face? You're an idiot for posting. your like, nuts he went berserk right so i deleted this guy i'm like uh -huh. all right i'm not gonna fucking engage he's unhinged right. i found I, I looked up who he is i found him online like i found where he lives i'm like this guy's not normal whatever i deleted him this right. guy went nuts why went because you deleted him because i removed him uh -huh. because i removed him went berserk messaging emailing everything he could find he kept messaging me mm. and finally he goes you know what you claim to be nuts on your show uh, you, 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 you guys drink and you guys party. It's all fake, huh? You're just a pussy. It's all fake. You're not real. And that's it. Didn't hear from him until last week. He really? showed up again. And I called Jeez. him out on the air. I'm like, oh, that nut job. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I never did any of that. It's mentally ill wow. people I, that you deal listen, with. You, you know, listen, Harry, you do, you, you do podcasts. You see what this is like. The internet is majority of people on the internet are unhinged. Mm. My theory is most people walk around, they have about eight hours they could be normal. Eight hours. Mm. They're ripping at the seams after that eight hours. <laughs> they just fucking fall <laughs> apart as human beings.
<laughs> and I think that's what happened to this guy. He just lost his shit. He saw my kids. He saw my wife. He's like, you know what? Fuck this guy. <laughs> he had to take fuck all his life's problems fuck you out. you and your beautiful wife and your, <laughs> your adorable kids. Yeah. Oh, you Unreal. think that's happiness, you piece of shit? Yeah. <laughs> You're shoving your kids down our throats? But see, that's, what that's what happens, Dante, when people just, they, they don't have their shit together and they still have to function in normal society. Yeah. That I don't know what happened before the internet. Like where how these old, How people, old are you, Andrew? 36. Okay. Go ahead, Tyler. I'm sorry. No, I was saying I don't know what the outlet would have been like before the internet. Like what? Yeah, well, just, but this, this y'all know the because the, here was the thing. You, these are all like before there was autism and ADHD and, uh, you know, ADD and all that stuff. You had undiagnosed paranoid schizophrenics. And they were undiagnosed with their mel- mental illness, and they went to got went to the post office. They got a job with the post office or the police or whatever the fuck, and they were able to hold it together. Like he said, for honestly, I mean, how often do they really hold it together? Even even when they work, and they really not hold it. But I mean, it's they were able to carve out a regular life, and you have people with undiagnosed mental illness everywhere, and they grew up. And they're 40 and 50 years old, 60 years old. And then you're like, you're dealing with people who are just insane. The next thing you know, they become president of the United States. It happens. There you go. Things happen. It, things happen. There you go. Andrew, Anything can happen. So I've met Andrew's wife many times. She's a very lovely, uh, lovely woman. I'm, I don't think we've ever talked personally. Like, I don't know if you ever talk about how you met or what your. I don't think yeah. we ever talked about what your dating life was like before her, after, not after. Yeah, but, you know. I used to on, on, on the show, you know, on the internet. In all that show, podcast, Poon, yeah. back know, in the I days. <laughs> no, it missed. came way before the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> there, was no, there was no internet radio rats. <laughs> that, no. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> The yeah, they used to line up around the studio. Podcast waiting. Poom was one chick with a sundress and thick glasses and smelled like patchouli. That's she was it. like, <laughs> She That's kept it. looking I mean, for I, Mark Maron. And you're like, I don't know. I mean, I, I <laughs> listen, Harry, you got to ask the lunatic radio guys about that. I've oh, seen it. Oh, the really? Podcast Poon? Yeah, I've seen they it. They get... used to do these live events out in the island, like in like Patchog. And they used to do like these meet and greets. And you had to see the X Men used to show up. Mm-hmm. One guy has, you know, Cyclops with one eye. Another one's missing an R. It, it was oh, it was Jesus. just unbelievable the, the 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 caliber of quality people that used to show up back oh, in the Jesus. early two thousand to these podcasts. Long meetings. Island. Well, them. they were popular locally too. So that Long right. Island, <laughs> that's got to be like what it's like when you go see uh, the Impractical Jokers live. <laughs> <laughs> like I like those guys, but I mean the, the fan base is just. They did a Christmas special in Staten Island of all places, so it lets you know what the fan base. exact demo. But what was, uh, what, I mean, what was, how did you meet your wife? Um, you meet? She was my bartender at this bar I used to drink at. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then mm. uh, she was, I was dating somebody else at the time. Mm. Uh, and it was a matter of like, which one am I, you know, what am I going to do? And my, I told my wife, she, she knew all about it. She's like, okay, whatever. You got till September. If you don't tell me what we're doing, I'm out. Oh, and really? that was it. I was like, all right, I'm dumping this girl, <laughs> you know. And I, and How long before September did she give you the deadline? July. That's some nice. You can get some nice work line. in. Yeah. You can get a lot of work in from July to September. Yeah. Woof. You could She's you could like, build up a nice retirement yourself. tour. On <laughs> That's that. what she did. She's like, enjoy yourself. You got you got about four months. You got about two months left in this. Wow. Now why did why September out of all things? Was <laughs> I had no idea. Oh, no really? idea. It's no the fall. Idea. It's the fall. Yeah, because my yeah, the fall, yeah. the summer's over. What are you gonna do? It's September. You wanna you wanna settle down, right? Isn't that the rule? So she was it's, cuff, it's almost cuffing, cuffing season. Yeah. It's right before yeah. cuffing season. In month. And yeah, what but was... uh, and and we've been together for fifteen years. Oh, wow. That's a cool. That's a cool last four months. Like a four months, you know, knock yourself out. Yeah, four minutes. What kind yes. of numbers could you put up? Uh, Andrew, what do you think? What kind of numbers you could put up? In I'm gonna four tell you something. Months? It fucked me up so much that I had that availability. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm done seeing anybody else. <laughs> it just it That's, rattled me. I don't know how to react. Fell so in love with her. You're like, this girl's amazing. This girl's amazing. I'm done. Because I, I, we a lot of times we don't want what we say we want. We we just want to be able to have it if we want it. Yeah, yeah. I think men like the option of it more than than the necessity. I know for me, I don't, especially now, I don't go after it as much as I used to. 
but it's always that itch you want to scratch. I think the idea of settling down with one person going, this is it forever, that kind of fucks with guys a lot. You want to be in your dress shoes, right? Walk past the basketball court and ask them for a shot, you know? Oh, and then okay. You just hit the three pointer from the bench, and then you, you, you just go with your hard bottom shoes. You coming home from church, you just head home. <laughs> yeah. You just want to know you got the three point, you still got the touch. That's it. Oh, man. Yeah. That, I, uh, the idea of a retirement tour is fascinating, but I'm thinking now that somebody must have gotten that. Like, what, what if that was your thing right before the pandemic hit? Like, listen, uh, we September's have to coming. this out. <laughs> September's <laughs> coming. So you got till September to rock out. And you're like, fucking, this is great. And then next thing you know, <laughs> no one can leave their house. I can put up, I can put up some good numbers <laughs> from July to September, baby. July, August. September. Well, you can put them year round, but that's the. But if you gave me a three month block, and you know and you're going out, and then you you like shot the a, a starter pistol, like you you you, 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 <laughs> you did the national anthem. You did the national anthem. Everybody, all right, everybody. I start. took a knee. I took a knee as they did the national anthem, and then the starter pistol for like. From July to September, I could put some nice numbers. You could do a hell of a run. You could cause some damn. All right, so Dante, I, this is a question that somebody was asking me about because I'm curious about this and what your thought, and Andrew, you can chime in too. What you think dating is like now during this pandemic and stuff because a lot of people are not, at least for a while, were not able to go out on physical dates. So what do you do if you're looking to meet somebody and stuff? Um, so How do you approach that? Well, I think I think people are there. People are still even though they're socially distancing, people are still coming across people. You're still talking. Um, I mean, you still see people communicating, you know, especially in the city. I mean, I don't know how it is in rural areas, but I don't ever really know how it is in rural areas. But I'm quite sure that people are um, have that kind of social connection is just a little bit different. And I, um, you know. I think there was a lot of people online too, you know, and they're doing dating apps, a lot of dating apps. So it's the, I think the availability is the same, just the hookup afterwards. But I think this is a really good time because it, it allows, it, it allows a guy to exercise his ability to, to, to converse with, or with people. Like you got to have more of a personality. You can't just, it right. can't be about the activity, you know? Uh, it, you know, it's a lot of times you take somebody to a movie you're like, OK, that's two hours. I don't have to talk. You know, if the movie's <laughs> great, I'm uh. good. And, you know, I mean, it's just different. But I think you have to kind of have a personality. Oh, I think I, I like I'll give you an example. One of my buddies, he hates his ex-wife, hates her. I mean, mm. she hates him, too. They're both terrible for each other. Good people, but they mm -hmm. hate each other. Just the most toxic relationship ever. So he called, I was, I asked him, I'm like, you want to come over, have a drink, whatever. He's like, no, I'm seeing so-and-so. I'm like, what do you mean you're seeing her? He goes, oh yeah, we're, we've been hooking up. I'm like, oh, why? He's like, I don't know, man. I effing hate her. But uh, what do you want me to do? Just have a dry spell for the next four months? I'm like, wait a oh minute. Oh my God. So you guys are hate, uh, hate fucking each other now? He's like, yeah. And it works out. Whatever. We bang. We, we have dinner together. And then we get into an argument after a couple drinks and she goes home and we do it again. Like in three days. <laughs> What a great system that they <laughs> had it set up. I go, now, what are you going to do when the pandemic's over? Yeah. He's like, I don't know. I don't you know just, what to do. You get into an argument and then you just never, never talk, talk to back. each other again, I guess. See, now that's, that's fucking strange to me. The hate fucking, I almost understand. But is she aware that they're hate fucking? Oh, yeah, is, no, he, she hates them. She but hates they're them. Both fucking, are they both attractive? The very attractive couple. Yeah. Okay. Very good looking. They that might be part of it. Yeah. Very good looking. It's a little bit different for yeah. the dude that they hates probably, fucking they're probably, ugly. They're probably the same person. They're very much. They're bro both not bright. They're yeah. really dumb. <laughs> really, attractive. really dumb. Yeah. That's why they. <laughs> the only thing I could talk to this guy about is sneakers. That's it. <laughs> He's really into sneaker culture, and that's the only thing we talk about. Nothing else. Um, I don't even know that you're a big sneaker guy, so there must be it must be limited to have this guy in your circle, Andrew. We just talk about Jordans. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So you you hit him up once twice a year? Yeah, like we we talk. No, I see him from the neighborhood. You know, like oh, I'll okay. see him around, and he like he sends me pictures of his sneakers now <laughs> throughout this whole thing. I never had a relationship with the guy. I think me and him are in a relationship throughout this pandemic. <laughs> we never we barely you got spoke. close. We yeah, we got my eye closed. He might try and hate fuck you. I you think we're going to say hate fucking <laughs> Dante, I mean, it, you done hate fucking? 
Like, nah, I, not, I don't know that I've yeah. ever done any hate fucking, to be I quite honest. It's not my thing, man. I don't I, I mean, I'm always like, I don't want to fuck somebody who doesn't want me to fuck them. Like, I don't understand. It, I mean, just call me different, but I don't understand this rape thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm tackling the hard topics here. I, I just don't understand somebody not wanting you and you wanting to to want them right. when they don't want you. Andre, no, I you think ever they done... both want each other physically. They're into They this. do, right, right. Yeah. Right, but I mean, they're, they're, what I'm, they, I, they must hate each other because they're the same person. Identical. Yeah, they're, so they're that's terrible, what it terrible is. people. And they're they're self, uh, you know, they're so self-absorbed that they're not. They don't even understand their own flaws. So they see their flaws in each other, and that's why they hate each other. But and, isn't and, it and, ironic that they're both uh, very similar, and yet they can't be together because of how awful yeah, they, they are? Because they don't like it. They don't like themselves. I uh, I went on vacation with them about yeah. uh, God, two thousand and five, two thousand six. Uh, my, we went on a cruise. It was my wife and another couple and these guys, right? And they're just, they're just idiots, like really dumb. They were trying to smuggle drugs on the boat. They got caught. <laughs> they were putting it in the camera roll, like in the, in the disposable camera. They were just stuffing the weed and they got caught. So when we got to the Bahamas, they decided they were going to go buy weed. So we're like, listen, just be careful because you're going to get ripped off. You're in the fucking Bahamas. Right, right. They're going to rip you off. You're never going to see them again. Mm -hmm. They got ripped off three times uh. buying... First time, they show the bag. You know, they're like, okay, whatever. They go, how much? They gave the money, and they came back, and it was just torn up newspaper. Uh. The other time, there was no bag. They just took the money and ran. The third time, it was just herbs. <laughs> Mixed uh. herbs in the bag. So they got ripped off three fucking three times. Three fucking times. That describes the caliber of, of intelligence. But you like, you'll see somebody will, will look at somebody like that, see... They'll, they'll that person will have their qualities and they'll hate them like you hate the people that have the qualities that you hate about yourself or that you potentially you mean be. subconsciously though because yeah, they're yeah. not capable of like consciously oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 if i if i see a dude you know I, you know how i'm anytime somebody goes yeah. you know happy life happy wife and he i go oh ugh. i'm like it just has a feeling because it's it's so what I never want to be. Right. Yeah. You know, and, so Andre, you ever hate fuck anyone? I'm going to just bet that I did. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? What do you mean? I'm like, you know what I mean? You know, you know yourself and then you know your history. You got to be like the ratio. That probably happened. I might have been like, fuck you. And she was like, fuck you too. And then we you did probably would have. You probably did that to Donifer. Probably doing for guns used to drive him crazy. He had this girl that was driving him nuts. That's probably I was stapled. Like hate fucking? Yeah. Oh, so all you did was hate fuck towards the end. Huh? I said towards all you did towards too. the end was hate fuck. Bitch. <laughs> you just drop an elbow, and that's how you'd start the fuck session, Andre. Is that what you're saying? Oh, jeez. great. I mean, it's a weird thing. How long y'all been married? Andrew, uh, 12 years uh, wow. on, sa on Sunday. Now, congrats. How's the kid? How old are the kids? Three and four. Oh, so you just y'all kind of just stayed married and worked yeah. it out. You enjoyed we, it we for a little young. bit. We were, we were in our 20s. We were really young uh, when we got married. We, she was 23 and I was 25 when we got married. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, we just had fun in our 20s. And then so did you got want it together? Did you? Oh, what was it? What was the shit you had to get together? What no, I got feel? my I got my life together. You know, I wasn't making money. I wasn't doing shit. You know, it, I got laid off in 08. And then by 09, I started doing a podcast because that's really a great thing you want to tell your wife. Hey, listen, I'm not, never going back to fucking work. This I'm mortgage that we man. got, <laughs> you know, we did one of those. We did one of those pre-economy uh, collapse mortgages mm. with zero down. Wow. On a, on a you know, <laughs> on, a, on a house you can't afford. So we were That's, just getting by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, you know, we just got her by like 27, 28. We were starting, you know, we were doing yeah. well. Her career blew up. So How long we're like, did okay. it take you to the podcasting to take off for you where you where you could do it full time? So uh, I tell people the story and they, they think it's crazy. But uh, within like six months, I was making some money because I don't know if you remember. Do you remember that website Stickham? Yes. OK, so Stickham had a tech guy on there named Leo Laporte that he used to do a tech pocket. He had a whole network, a tech network. So when 
I started doing my tech stuff, he was leaving. And uh-huh. they were paying him a good amount of money to be on there. Okay. So one, the program director of, of Stickham, this guy named Andy, he, he called me and he's like, listen, um, we have this opportunity. Do you want to be like the guy for like that kind of like radio content on here? I'm like, yeah, no problem. And he signed me to a deal. Oh. I signed a contract. And uh, after that, it just it, it was, you know, it just started happening. Mm-hmm. It was just right place at the right time. It, I, I sucked. I mean, I was terrible. But we were we always like our studio always looked good. But I, I didn't know shit about doing radio. I just right, right. I was copying what I thought, you know, worked. Uh, and it just so, you know, it took it took we, we got that deal. And that was a, that was at least enough money. And, you know, my unemployment ran out and that started. And, and then we just started, you know, ad sales. And so you didn't have to go. just you didn't have you, you kind of developed it on your own. When was it that you really thought you were like, this is going to be the thing? Is it all or should I say? Well, yeah, that's a good question. When did you think that podcasting was going to be the thing? I knew immediately. Uh, I knew that this was this was the future. I knew that radio was dying. Uh, I had a friend in ad sales and, for uh, KTU, and they yeah. fired everybody. And he he called me. We were talking about podcasts because I had just started. He goes, "Listen, it's over for radio. They'll always be here, mm-hmm. but the the days of going into a station and saying, give me an opportunity, give me a show, it's gone. It's all about music. They don't want personality. They got all these people got to go somewhere.'" And I thought it was such a great opening. That you have, you know, in fact, Dante, listen, you're doing a show. Your show, my show, can never be on the radio the way that it is. And most likely, it won't ever get the viewership that you do now on the radio. Right. You know, that's the reality of it. We've, mm. we've had a couple options to put, put Matt Men on the radio and this. It just doesn't make sense. And mm. it's more of a connection. You could build with a relationship with your viewers. And yeah. those are the guys that are going to be behind you. You know, we do a Patreon, we have ads, and we do, like, I do all the ad sales for us. Um, you know, pre, pre-pandemic, it was great. You know, now it's kind of becoming a struggle to do it, but, you know, it'll, it'll boost back. But I, I want to say probably, like, 2012, 2011, I saw what was happening. I saw it evolving, and the option that a non-celebrity, a non-main media guy could get into this, Mm-hmm. and have you know a quarter of a million viewers or a half right. a million viewers it, it's it's crazy right 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 that is open to anyone that you're it's saying how would that affect the marriage and stuff or, or because you got a contract it was pretty straightforward yeah when, when i when i started it was it was um it was great because i don't think anybody thought that you know it was a good amount i think it was like 50 grand mm. uh, you know after uh, it was crazy. I, I had no idea what I was doing. How many, so was hours like, okay. did, how many hours did you have to put in? So I was doing, I think at the time we were doing like nine shows a week. Mm-hmm. So some were two hours, some were an hour, but I didn't, it was just, they wanted content. Right. They just wanted the tech show more than anything else. They didn't care about anything else other than mm-hmm. the tech show. So um, we started doing it, but talking about the marriage, you know, it was rough for a while because you kind of get obsessed over this. Right. And you kind of hyper-focus. And I always tell the story, and it's sad and hysterical at the same time. Uh, we did a New Year's show one year. I think it was 2011. We did, like, this big New Year's thing. And, we, you know, she hung out. She did the show because she used to do the podcast with us all the time. Uh-huh. So I'm like, she's like, listen, come upstairs. I'm going to take some champagne upstairs, and, uh, you know, we'll hang out. You know, just – I'm like, she's like, how long are you going to be? I'm like, another hour tops. 4.30 in the morning, I'm getting off the air. I'm drunk. Mm-hmm. I go upstairs. She's like in her lingerie, passed mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. And yeah. she wakes up. She was hysterical crying. No. Yeah. And oh, I was like, man. okay, I learned my mistake here. I won't ever do that, you know. But, you yeah. know, it, it's rocky because you don't know, especially, you know, in the beginning, you don't know if you're going to be able to make money. And her career is starting. She's a teacher. You know, she, she's a teacher. Right. Um, so her career is starting. So, you know, so she's she not was making. Going to school when school when she was bartending. Yeah, she was in school when she was bartending, yeah. Mm. So we're like, okay, you know, we're trying to put it together. But it was, you know, it was rough at times because sometimes there would be no ad revenue coming in. You know, a couple bad months, if I, if I sucked at selling that ad, mm-hmm. that's a problem. If an ad drops, it's a problem considering we were running so tight financially right, right. at the time. Right, you know, right, right, right. It, it's, it, Now, were, you, you, doing, were you doing, were you doing, you you did everything in the house? You did it right from your house? or did Right you, from my house, yeah. Okay, right from the beginning. So when they cut the contract, you just did the con- you did the you did everything right from the studio in the house. Yep, I just continued doing it. Once that was over, because we did it for like two years. 
uh, with them and they went out of business. So yeah. that's when it ended, you know, but it, it was, I think for a lot of people, it's trial and error to see what works, what doesn't. I think kind of now with podcasts and we know what's working and what's not working. You got, you know, stand up comedy podcast killing it. You, got, you know, my buddy Tim Dillon's doing unbelievable yeah. with his show. You got a lot of people, you know, doing really well. Uh, I think we kind of understand how to do it. And before, nobody understood these numbers. Right. Yeah. Now, qu you talk about that story from New Year's Eve. I find fascinating because a lot of us have been there because whatever you do, you have to kind of give it your all. And you do, like you said, become obsessed with it. And it becomes a hard thing for your partner who's involved to kind of deal with that. Like, you know, where you kind of make her it become second place, but it's kind of what you have to do to make it in the business or to make your passion work. Isn't it, Andrew? Yeah. Look at, looking back in hindsight. Yeah. You, I mean, I think she would say too, that you, you need, cause I was doing like seven hours of shows a day at one point. I mean, I was doing everything and anything, throwing everything against the wall to see what worked. Uh -huh. And at one point you kind of step back and you say, okay, these are the things that are working for me. So I'm not going to concentrate on stuff that doesn't work. It's just, I may not be good at that. And it's, it's trial and error, but it took like two, three, maybe even four years to kind of get into that groove of being able to manage your life and manage. Like one of my things is I have a book here. I, I'm, I've gotten organized in life and I need to write things down. Mm -hmm. Like with the show today, Harry messaged me last night. Hey, do you want to come on? Yeah, no problem. Let's do it. I had to write it in here. If I didn't write it in here, there would be no way I was going to show up. I just can't, I, I'm terrible with time management. And I think that was the biggest problem, you know, and it plays a factor in relationships. You know, if you tell someone so, you're going to be there at nine for dinner and you don't show up till 11, that's a problem. But well, you know, one of the things is I think you gotta, you can't treat your, your passion. Like it's a side bitch. Like you give, if, if you're going to do this, it has to be, it has to take priority. That doesn't mean that it gives you room, room to not, be a man of your word. So if you say an hour, I'll be up in an hour and a half. You got to be an hour and a half. But it also doesn't mean that you you make I, I so many guys I've seen, like when I first started doing comedy and guys would be like, um, yo, I'm uh, you know, I'm not going out this weekend to, to, to get on stage because I got to I got to do this. So I got to do that. I got to stay home because she wants me to be home. So what it, what it, what it, what it feels like almost is as if you're cheating on them with this business, it, they get the feeling as if you're cheating on them, like you're sneaking it behind them. And I think you have to be clear about that. This is good, what you're going to do. And this is your passion. And if this is not something you're interested in, then you got to keep it moving because this is what I'm going to do that. I think, you know, kind of stating that is also partially why they why a woman finds you trustworthy in the first place is because you're actually being honest about what you feel. And if you're dishonest, even if it benefits her or benefits your e her ego, it, you're still dishonest. You still end up being dishonest, you know? Yeah, no, I, I think that's that's actually exactly uh how kind of it lays out. I, I think for us, because we started doing a podcast together, we would do my show together. Mm -hmm. So she was almost like my Robin. She would do the new segment and then, my. you know, she would come in in the last hour. I think having her there, she understood how, yeah. how you could kind of become so engulfed in this, right. you know, cause she right. developed the passion for it too. But I also think for us, it was a, it was a great way to communicate in a relationship because you are, you have the mask of doing the show. Right. So you could say things a little bit differently because you're doing a show and be open about it and maybe be a little aggressive or be a little bit more submissive about a subject that you guys are talking about. Right. And that's the real conversation. That's how you really feel. I always tell people, you know, I'm not putting on an act when I do a show. It's really how I feel in right. real life. If I'm a little I'm a little bit more reserved with my thoughts, but because I'm doing a show. It allows me to kind of be more bigger. outlandish with what I'm actually thinking. Just and, and be just bigger. Say oh, I even more so more truthful about it, I think. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, the thing about that is even that is what is, is trustworthy is the honesty of that. But, I, but I'm, I'm always hesitant about, you know, I mean, you do what you got to do. So you're in this you have this radio situation and you're both on radio and you can be more honest. But the reality is that the honesty, like you, you think that you need the crutch of the show 
to be honest, when you should be able to be honest without the show, that the crutch, there shouldn't be a crutch there that you feel as though you bring so much value to the relationship. And this person feels that, that they're willing to say, well, listen, this is, this is who I am, you know, like it or not. Like, uh, and I, and I think we're, you know, when we use like, um, you know, just bridges to that, I, I think we get away from where we really need to be. But I mean, you know, you don't want to start a fight. You don't want to, you know, we always say you don't want to, you know, you got to have the argument or you got to have the discussion. Yeah. You no, know? I, I think also being able to hear your partner be open, you know, un, unfiltered more than right. anything else. Right. It's a blessing. I, I, one of my friends, he came on my show. He's a, he's a comic and he said something about his relationship one time and, and his girlfriend got really mad. And my wife and him were talking and he goes, listen, she should be happier expressing it because mm. she would never know that you were uncomfortable with this scenario that was playing out. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy was seeing an ex-girl. Uh, the, the girl was seeing an ex-boyfriend. They worked together and they would go out for mm. drinks and he would act like he was fine with it. Mm. You know, he didn't want it because there was nothing there. He trusted her, but right. still he was uncomfortable. So he made, he made, he did a whole thing about it, but he turned it into a joke. Um, and she got, she was upset that he didn't, she didn't know. And he said, he's, my wife goes, he goes, listen, she would have never known if you didn't say it. Well, here's the other thing. It's, it's interesting. There's two things that that reads to me. Number one, the fact that she didn't know says that she's not really paying attention to him. Exactly. Yeah. Secondly, it, the fact that she got angry about it means she's not even looking at the content of what he's saying. She, she's offended. Her ego is offended. And so this is why this is, this is exactly what he's saying is that she's selfish. She's self-centered and she's selfish and she doesn't, she's not really concerned about his happiness. And so that has to be the full stop right there is when you have to decide is do you want to be with a person who is self-centered self-absorbed and doesn't give a fuck about my happiness i think a lot of people don't know how they're supposed to react to situations i think they react based on things that you they've seen from their friends or other partners and how they've reacted especially sure. in your 20s right this is the time when i started yeah. doing this i was in my 20s my, my wife and i knock on wood we've always been open communicating with each other we, we've never had those issues um, considering what my day job is now, uh, which mm. Harry knows, <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, I, I, you know, you gotta be very comfortable with the part, which I'll talk about if you want. You um, can, yeah, you can tell us if it, if uh, it doesn't I, matter I, to you. I, I'm, I'm a VP at a strip club mm. here in New York. So, Another one of Andrew walks into some bizarre <laughs> side gigs <laughs> for whatever reason, cause he's just a smart guy yeah. and, and people <laughs> are like, you're smart. You should do this. <laughs> and next thing you know, uh, well, next it thing you know, I get career. free passes to the strip club, which has been yeah. which has been fun. Which I think you came, right? Yeah, I gone. did come once or yeah. twice. Yeah, for a birthday party, it was which a good I, time. I'm not a big strip club guy, but me neither. I guess th th but. That works for me, you know. But uh, I, I think people react in a certain way in a relationship. They're either re uh, replicating what they see on movies or TV shows or their friends, and I always mm. felt like that's the wrong way to do it, especially in your 20s. 20 year olds are idiots. Yeah. Everybody thinks a 20-year-old that got their shit together. It doesn't matter how much money you make as a 20-year-old. You have no idea what's going on in, in reality. I, 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 I truly believe it. If I go back 10 years ago when I'm doing my podcast, I wasn't right. as comfortable as I am today because I don't, you know, you're, you're, I'm in my mid-30s now, late 30s. I'm way more comfortable as a person. Uh, and I think that's, you know, that's kind of the difference when you start dating someone young and when you start dating someone in your 30s. You're kind of established of who you are in your 30s. You know right. who you are. Right. Uh, in your 20s, you're still trying to figure life out. You know? You're right. But I think we also, there's really no, no direction. Like, so we have an acronym on the show. It's, it's ACE. It's uh, Authenticity, Credibility, and Empathy. Right? And those are the three principles that I see. If you practice those principles, everything falls into place. Um, I think a lot of times, like you said, you, when you're young, you're in your 20s or, or, you know, you start trying to find most people don't even most guys don't even have uh, they don't even have an acronym to to guide them in a direction. Right. It just is whatever it is. It's however, you know, it's a hodgepodge. Of, it's just like trial said, and it's just blind trial see. and error. Yeah. Is and, what it and, is. And, and the you worst don't way even to go know, about it. 
And then sometimes you come from, we come from abusive families and, you know, emotionally abusive. And so we don't even know what happiness looks like because that, and so you, you're just flailing around. And so one of the things about doing this podcast and, and being, it gives a guy something to shoot for. Some direction. At least it's a, at it's, least. At least it's yeah. a, a bullseye. Even if they never hit the bullseye, at least they're shooting in the right direction. And I think we don't really have that in terms of what manhood should mean. Or, or and, I, and I say manhood, but I mean, I'm even becoming more open about it. Just citizens, just the civility of humanity is to tell the truth. You say something, you say you're going to do something, you do it. And to have the, 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 the wherewithal to just have some, to, to check out and see what does it look like to, to walk in somebody else's tennis shoes, you know? But the, but the frustrating thing is, even though we're open to it for everyone, I mean, the feeling that we go with on the show, uh, the direction is that the relationship goes through the man because he has to be the captain of the ship. And if he's not, that's the other weird part is that it, it sort of doubles down on what the man's responsibility is. Because when you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're doing for yourself, but you right. also don't know what you're doing in regards to your partner. Well, here's, here's the thing with that, you know, and I, I sometimes people get a little crazy when they go, um, uh, you know, when, when I say it, the relationship goes through the man. The point being, if you have a strong woman, and we've, we've, you've seen this and you heard this, you got a strong woman and she can't find a man and her girlfriends are going, oh, he's cute. Why don't you give him a chance? That, that in itself is the kiss of death yeah. because what her friends are saying, he's a nice guy. We know you don't respect him, hmm. but give him an opportunity. So once you understand how this is, that, that this woman is, is basically rating your manhood on a scale whether or not she should respect you or not. Um, you can't tell a woman to, a, a strong woman to be weaker. She's not going to do that. If she's an aggressive woman, she needs a guy who matches that aggression or knows how to de-escalate that aggression. You can't, you can't tell her to be weaker because all she's going to do is she's going to, you know, eventually she's going to bite your head off because you really, you didn't really have the constitution to kind of mesh with her in the first place. So I think that's really the reason it's like, you can't ask a woman to be less woman because you're not man enough, you know? Now, I, I think this is a, a, uh, major problem with people settling with other people that they are not compatible with. Sure, sure. They're just, you know, I, listen, my, my friends are now, most of them are, are 40 or, or they're approaching 40, a little above 40. They've been with their wives or girlfriends long term. Mm -hmm. And when I, and, and the wives too, you know, my wife hangs out with a lot of them and they hear mm -hmm. how they talk about their spouses, yeah. uh, how they talk about their partner. And it's, it's terrible. You know, yeah. it's not, you know, one thing I always said, once my, once I can't compliment my wife or, or, or talk go. about her in a positive way to yeah. my friends and it's becoming more negative, the relationship is done. Yeah. It's over because you want that person that you're with to show the best of you. Yeah. And if you if that's how you feel, it says a lot about you, right? right but right, sure. I think some people for for whatever reason, and this is something I've always I, I never had. Uh, luckily for me, and I understand it. I, I have sympathy for these people. I don't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not trashing them. But people settle with people, and they don't know how to leave once it's bad. I. I. I, I tell the story on the air all the time. Uh, I think. I think. I, I actually told the story at, at at lunch one time with Harry. Uh, I was in a really toxic relationship when I was like 18, 19 years old. Uh, she. She was probably. You know, she's married now. Has kids. But it was just toxic. It was terrible. And it was terrible because we were young. It was terrible because we didn't know what the hell we were doing. It was terrible for a lot of reasons. But it just, at one point, I just got up. I'm like, we shouldn't be doing this. This isn't working for us. And she thought I was nuts. I'm Everybody thought I was crazy minutes. to be able to do this, to be able to turn the around and say, The fact that you were able to pull the plug on something bad, they were shocked. I pulled by the like, plug on my what? birthday. It was my 21st birthday. I pulled the plug. What the I fuck? did it in a really shitty way, though. I packed her luggage, and I called her sister, and her sister picked up all her shit. 
Oh Jesus! You must have really hated her then. I, to I do it that. Was just, it was just. It, it was like two a.m. Waking up. Cr- Did you send crying. her the tracking number? <laughs> <laughs> no, she took off. She took off to uh, Europe. She took off to another country. Oh, she geez. left. Yeah, she racked she- up about fourteen thousand dollars on my Amex. Wow. That's oh, a boy. whole separate thing. Oh uh, shit! I, you know, I see her you on didn't Instagram think that one now. Through. Yeah, I see her on Instagram. She looks happy. She looks great. She has two, you know, two, three kids, married, and I'm like, I'm sure it's not what she's. It's not her. I'm sure it was the relationship. I'm sure it was two people not compatible for each other. Yeah. At the time, you know, and and people fall into this trap where they go, "Well, you know, I'm with them." I think it's just companionship. People just don't well, want to be don't, alone. Well, they don't. A lot of times, they don't think that they're worthy of that. They can't find somebody else. Like, what if I can't find somebody else? So I don't I'll think that person exists to them. They don't. They believe that that person does not exist. That's an anomaly. You know, that perfect person for them that's into, you know, the things that they're into or things that they're, they may be into. But, but what happens is well, more often than not when you, when, you know, I've, I do, when I do these consultations with dudes, they always talk about what they loved about the person when they loved the person. And then none of those things are, are present in the, re- in the relationship now. Like, you, well, how, when's the last time she baked you cookies? When's the time, last time that you fuck in a bathroom? When did you, you know? But, yeah. just, but what happens is they, you, you, like, you, you, I always say you gotta, you gotta, appra- you gotta uh, buy a house based on the appraisal, the present appraisal. You can't, you can't do what <laughs> like it was that. worth yeah. or per- prospectively what it will be worth. You got to get the appraisal for right now. And the long, and if you wait too long to buy the house, then you need to get another appraisal to see if, if, if to get the value. So I think we, 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 we wage that original value into something that doesn't even exist. We just remember how great it was. And then a lot of times you ask them, you know, when the last time that happened, they'll tell you six or seven years. Well, they can't remember the last yeah. time that they enjoyed each other's company. And the thing I think, uh, the other thing is it's, it's almost like I'm not happy. I want to go. And somebody goes, uh, and the ego goes, how dare you want to leave, want to leave me? Even if she don't like you, even if she wants yeah. to leave you, she's, it's still, how dare you? So it's the ego that stands in the way of like our, us really being honest about what makes us happy in the first place. Listen, it, it, it's, it's multi-layered, right? I mean, mm. relationships are totally multi-layered. There has to be a sexual attraction layer. You got to get laid. Sure. Uh, if, it, it, I mean, and I think people downplay that tremendously, but that, that's a major factor in a relationship. Yeah, especially, sure. I mean, for guys and girls, right? I, yeah, I don't sure. believe... You know, there's this there's this notion there, uh, this this concept that you know men are more men are more likely to want to have more sex. I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's true anymore, especially nowadays. I think a lot of those the the, the that's out the window. Here's what I would say: women women want good sex, men want any sex. So <laughs> yeah, yes, pretty much. Yeah. So so if it's yeah. if it's good sex, they'll go they'll they'll tie you out you know they want it more than you want so i mean but i I think we definitely look at it from a different perspective but you're right the physical is very important like i i would i have this thing i say when you break up with a girl and your heart's broken uh getting over your girlfriend is five pussies away and (laughs) it takes five 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 of them (laughs) five so what happens usually the first one is awful because there's this awkwardness and because you're so accustomed to the person that you were with. So it almost becomes, you know, love and that, that feeling of being turned on is, is a drug. It's the endorphins are released and, and then they're, they're connected to her smell, her skin, her tone of her voice, the shape of her body. You connect that sexuality to her. And so when you're, when you're having sex you, the first time, it's awkward because it's not the same. The second time, it's a little less awkward, but it's okay. The third time, you almost like reboot your brain to what sex is. You, you start to, it starts, to, she starts to blur and this, these other people become more vivid or more graphic. So you're really just rebooting your body so that you can move on. Whereas if you, you give people like, I just want to find myself and, 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 you know, I just want to put my time and energy into my work. And then, but they still have this addiction to those stimulus, you know, and you have to break that 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 psychological addiction from the person that you you you've been around with them so long. You know, where, what where between the five does the awkward threesome fall in? 
Um, if you can get that one out the front, out the front end, you could probably get. You could probably do it. It'll be. It could be five. Five pussies cumulative. <laughs> so that was. <laughs> You mean so you the gross? Did, just yeah, the gross? Yeah, the gross of the, yeah, the gross. vaginas yeah. in the gross, though. So. The, the uncomfortable, awkward threesome after a, uh, a 2 a.m. bar visit. Yeah, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I mean, that counts towards the five. I think it it'll get... It does count towards the five. I think if you end up in a threesome, I mean, you know, even I uncomfortable had that and or I, not. And I, and I think I, I, I'm, I, I tell the story and people call me a pussy, but I locked myself in my bathroom after. I, I couldn't deal with it. It was too much. Really? Oh, well, really? It's, it's yeah. honest. <laughs> well, I'll tell the story. It was... My, it was a girl I was seeing and her brother's fiance. Wow. Oh, that's way. That's and, no. and I got I got yelled at uh, during because I was paying attention to the fiance. Uh, <laughs> so oh, it, boy. And that was it. That was it. One and done. Never again. Yeah. Everything has to flow. We got we'll do that another time, Andrew. Yeah. But there's there's three some rules. We have yeah. three some rules that you always have to follow. Andrew, thank you so much for um, for coming on, man. I appreciate you, bro. Dante, thank you so much for having me. Harry, thanks again. Oh, well, no anything doubt, you want to plug? Anything you uh, want to plug? Your GF 17 Network. podcasts. Com. I'm sorry, oh, I talked my, over it. Oh, my 32 it. podcasts. Yeah, uh, yeah. I do a uh, pro wrestling podcast if you're into that. Matt Men podcast. I do a technology podcast called What the Tech. And uh, that's it for, for now. I mean, GFTNetwork.com. All right. Appreciate you, man. Uh, Harry, talk to me. Uh, you could... Uh, Check out all my stuff at IHateComedy.com, but also uh, Catalyst Wrestling. We are on a number of platforms, including YouTube. You can always check that out. Uh, we're on Gas Digital. We're on Fight Network. So a lot of stuff there. And also check out the YouTube page of this show, the Man School So Too YouTube page. That's where you new can content. see new, a lot content, of new content, up clips, there. and all the visuals here. You can watch this show we're doing now and see all the visuals and see all the dumb things that Andre does as well. Mm. Where what happened then? Uh, he had a meeting he had to take, oh, okay. so uh, he, right. I quietly ushered him out. Of, All right. He he got super high, and then he's got a fucking meeting that he yeah, has to do. So like, anyway, um, anything with me, you can you need to consult with me. All my Instagram and all my stuff is on DanteNewRegard.com. Check that out. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all, man. If you like what we see. Uh, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, and follow us on Instagram. Check out the YouTube page. We are out.